The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to all. I am Ridhil Mishra and on behalf of K Ratings welcome you to our series of industry webinars. Today we'll be taking we'll be talking on exploration and production of oil and gas. Will India be able to achieve sizable reduction in oil and gas imports? K Ratings sincerely appreciate your time in joining us for this webinar. To take you further on this, may I introduce our speakers for today. Uh, we have with us Mr. Sanjay Kumar Agarwal. Mr. Agarwal is a senior director at Care Ratings and has over 23 years of experience in the field of ratings, banking, and infra finance. He is a grad at CWA and fellow member member of ICAI. He has also qualified as financial risk manager from GAAP USA and as certified financial planner from FPSB India. Our second speaker for today is Mr. Manik Narang, who will join us from our Delhi office. Manik is working with Care Ratings as Associate Director and is the sector specialist for oil and gas sector. He has an experience of over 15 years and has been involved in ratings of large and medium corporates across several sectors. He is a chartered accountant and MBA from MDI Gurgaon. A third speaker from, for today is Mrs. Urvisha Jagaset. Uh, Urvisha is working with Care Ratings as a research analyst and is part of the industry research team. I would like to inform our discussion will be in form of a presentation which is visible on your screen. Uh, in case of queries, please key in your questions in the slot provided. We'll be having a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. I repeat, in case of queries, please key in the questions in the slot provided. Our speakers would take the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Uh, may I request Sanjay sir to begin the session? Good afternoon. We welcome you all in today's webinar, which is on exploration and production of crude oil and natural gas. The ENP sector is the upstream segment of the oil and gas value chain. Indian economy is slated to grow by 6.5% in FY18, with infrastructure and industry projects being the integral part of the investment cycle demand for energy will increase. The government has targeted to reduce import of oil and gas by 10% by 2022. If India plans to cut import of oil and gas by 10% by 2022, the oil production has to increase at least three times from its present level. And oil imports for the period need to be 1411 million barrels compared to 1568 million barrels currently. Imports can be reduced only by either increasing domestic crude oil production or by curtailing consumption. The topic of discussion for today's webinar is going to be going to focus on India's ability to achieve sizable reduction in imports. Presently, the government allows 100% FDI in upstream and private sector refining projects. India currently ranks 22nd in the world for oil reserves and at current rate of extraction could last up to 14 and a half years. India has 26 sedimentary basins but only 7 basins Assam, Cambay, Krishna Godavari, Mumbai offshore, Assam Arakan, Fold Belt, Rajasthan and Kaveri have commercial production of oil and gas. Now, crude oil is a mixture of various hydrocarbon compounds and other materials. Natural gas is a mixture of gases which are rich in hydrocarbon. So, crude, produced, crude oil produced, through, produced goes through extensive processing before it can be commercially utilized. The production involves primary recovery that is through reservoir pressure and secondary recovery that is through artificial lift. Natural gas is not used in its pure form. It is processed and converted into cleaner fuel for consumption. Many byproducts are extracted while processing of natural gas such as propane, ethane, butane, carbon dioxide and nitrogen which can be further used. Composition of natural gas varies from field to field. Natural gas comes in four basic forms in India LNG, RLNG, CNG and PNG. 
I would now request Urvisha to take over the presentation and highlight upon the domestic production and import situation of crude oil and natural gas and policies undertaken by government to augment domestic production. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay, sir. So when we talk about exploration, we include activities like drilling of rigs and deploying of production platforms, depending upon location and geological conditions of the hydrocarbon fields. For oil and natural gas, exploration was carried forth by national oil companies, which are ONGC and Oil India, through a nomination regime, and private companies like Reliance Industries, SR Oil, Gujarat State Petroleum Corporation, Kane India, were allowed to enter into exploration through joint venture agreements with these NOCs. This was applicable under the pre-new exploration and licensing policy. Subsequently, 100% foreign participation in exploration was allowed in the NELP regime. But from March 2016 onwards, NELP has been replaced by a new fiscal regime, which is hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy, which is monitored by the Directorate General of Hydrocarbon. There has been a prominent degrowth in the crude oil production. This is attributable to the lack of efficient production and drilling from matured oil fields and also due to the low performance of the fields under the production sharing contracts. The inability to bring fresh big reserves into production has kept production stagnant over the years. Also to be noted is the figures which are provided by the official sources in India is in terms of 1000 tons, but we at CARE ratings like to convert the data into barrels for a better understanding as worldwide nomenclature crude oil is always measured in terms of barrels. ONGC is the largest domestic producer of crude oil in the country. During financial year 16-17, ONGC produced 187.1 million barrels, which is 71% of the domestic production. Oil India produced 24 million barrels, and the rest remaining balance of 52.8 million barrels were produced by joint ventures and uh, private companies. Exploration is carried forth on onshore and offshore fields. Like crude oil, natural gas production too has declined over the years due to the natural decline in production from the aging fields of ONGC and Oil India. In addition, there has been lower than expected natural gas production from the Krishna Godavari Basin as well. Drop in production has been due to high water and sand ingress because of which oil and natural gas fields have to remain shut which hinders the production. Domestic production of natural gas has been constantly falling at a rate of 6.14% since the past five years from financial year 12-13 to financial year 16-17. Talking about the imports of crude oil, India's oil production has stalled below 1. million barrels per day in recent years, even though oil demand has surged, resulting in its crude oil imports soaring, making it the world's third biggest importer behind China and the United States. India imports about 4.3 million barrels per day and about 80 to 85 percent of our crude oil requirements are met through imports. Currently, India used to import crude oil from Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Nigeria, Venezuela, UAE, Angola, Kuwait, Malaysia, Mexico, Qatar and Brunei. Imports have risen at a compounded annual growth rate of 3% from financial year 12-13 onwards to financial year 16-17. The value of imports in dollar terms has also increased by 9.7% in financial year 16-17. Crude oil imports were worth about $63,972 million in financial year 15-16 and $70,196 million in financial year 16-17. Imports of natural gas. So natural gas are, is imported in the form of liquid natural gas. Natural, uh, India imports a significant amount of natural gas in the form of LNG, 
from Qatar, Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, UAE, Trinidad and Tobago, Oman, Algeria, Malaysia, Brazil, Norway, Angola, Peru, Egypt and Australia. Qatar accounts for around 62% of overall LNG imports to India, followed by Nigeria supplying 12% of the LNG imports. India imports 20 to 30% of gas through spot markets and the rest through long-term contracts. LNG is then stored as regasified liquid natural gas for better storage purposes. Imports of LNG are increasing at a compounded annual growth rate of 9.24%, from financial year 1213 onwards. Petronet LNG Limited is the largest importer of LNG in India. So after getting a brief idea of what the production and import dynamics has been during the previous five years, we shall now discuss about the demand supply situation in the current fiscal year. Since the past few months, production of crude oil from the fields belonging to ONGC and Oil India seem to have picked up. But there has been a little degrowth again in the fields of production from private upstream players. And that has been bringing down the overall percentage by 0.4%. Uh, Value-wise, value -wise, oil imports during financial year 17-18 have been valued at dollars 61.775 million which is 22% higher than the oil imports in the corresponding period last year. Imports of crude oil have been rising over the years as domestic production fails to meet the increase in energy needs to the country. But there's a little bit of positivity as we are noticing a shift in the supply base of imports during financial year 17-18 as imports from OPEC countries have reduced to 82.6% of the total imports vis-a-vis -vis to its share formerly being 87.4%. Now there has been an increase of imports from non-OPEC countries like USA, Canada, Russia, Kazakhstan and Sudan. Domestic production of natural gas seems to have commenced on a positive note during the current financial year as there has been a 4% increase in production. Increase in production could be attributed to the favorable acreage policies which are being adapted to enhance domestic output of oil and natural gas. The government is also emphasizing on the increased use of natural gas. LNG imports have risen to the extent to bridge the demand supply gap. We shall now be briefly discussing about the policies which the government has undertaken and introduced in order to augment and enhance the domestic production of crude oil and natural gas. The first policy we'd like to talk about is discovered small field policy. The discovered for small field policy provides for single uniform license for producing all kinds of hydrocarbon, no cess on the oil production, moderate royalty structure, customs, duty exemptions and complete marketing and pricing freedom for the sale of produced crude oil and natural gas. These small fields are envisaged to put on production through expeditious efforts. The government has awarded 31 contract areas comprising of 44 discovered small fields, 28 onshore and 16 offshore. These areas were discovered long back but these discoveries could not be monetized due to various reasons such as isolated location, small size of reserves, high de development costs, technological constraints, fiscal regimes, so on. These contract areas have been awarded under the new regime of revenue sharing model and it is expected that in place locked hydrocarbons volume of 40 million metric tons which is equal to 293 million barrels of crude oil and 22.0 be a billion cal cal calorific million of gas to be monetized over a period of 15 years. Now the second policy that is a national seismic program of unappraised areas. The government of India has planned the 2D seismic survey of unappraised areas across the country for potential oil and natural gas reserves as almost half of India's sedimentary areas are yet to be appraised. This project has an estimated expenditure of rupees 5,000 crores. ONGC is carrying out the national survey on most parts of the country, while Oil India has undertook the project in northeastern states. 
NSP will be covering 26 sedimentary basins divided into 11 units. The National Seismic Program is likely to be completed by 2019-20. The gas pricing reforms is mainly towards the pricing of natural gas, which has been found in the fields. The government approved the new gas pricing formula in October 2014. The gas pricing guideline has struck a fine balance between the requirements of both producing and consuming sectors to incentivize gas production from difficult areas such as high pressure, high temperature reservoirs and deep water and ultra deep water areas. The government has also given marketing and pricing freedom. Now hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy, which is HELP. This is one of the most important reforms which has been introduced by the government of India and it has been making quite a difference as we have noticed that the natural gas production has gone up high by 4% in this financial year. So the hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy is a new fiscal model based on revenue sharing contract. This is an upgraded version as compared to the previous new exploration licensing policy and production sharing contract. It also addresses various industry concerns that contributed to a slowdown in upstream oil and gas investment over the last few years. In March 2016, hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy replaced the NELP. Now the four main facets of this policy are uniform license for exploration and production of all forms of hydrocarbon and open acreage policy easy to administer revenue sharing model and marketing and pricing freedom for the crude oil and natural gas produced. HELP was devised to ensure higher domestic oil and gas production to attract substantial investment in the sector and generate sizable employment. The policy is also aimed at enhancing transparency and reducing administrative discretion. The uniform license will enable the contractor to explore conventional as well as non-conventional oil and gas sources, including coal-based methane, shale oil, tight gas, and gas, gas hydrates over a single license. The earlier contracts were based on the concept of profit sharing, whereas profits were shared between the government and the contractor after the recovery of the cost. Under the profit sharing methodology, it became necessary for the government to scrutinize cost details of private participants and this le led to many delays and disputes. But under the new regime, the government will not be concerned with the costs incurred and will receive a share of the gross revenue from the sale of oil and gas, giving a rise to a new fiscal model based on con revenue sharing contract. Recognizing the higher risks and costs involved in exploration and production from offshore areas, lower royalty rates for such areas have also been provided as compared to the NELP royalty rates to encourage exploration and production. A graded system of royalty rates has been introduced in which royalty rates decreases from shallow water to deep water to ultra deep water. At the same time, royalty rates for online areas have been kept intact so that the revenues to the state governments are not affected. On the lines of NELP cess and import duty will not be applicable on blocks awarded under the new policy. This policy also provides for marketing freedom for crude oil and natural gas produced from these blocks. Now, as a part of HELP, uh, OALP was also introduced. OALP gives an option to a company looking for exploring hydrocarbons to select the exploration block on its own without waiting from the formal bid from the government. The other policy which we are now discussing will be the permission to extraction of CMB to Coal India Limited and its subsidiaries in coal mining areas. The government has also permitted Coal India and its subsidiaries to undertake coal-based methane operations in the coal mining lease areas held by them. This decision will not only help augmenting the CBM gas production in the country, but it will also make mines safe for operations. The second last policy, that is the Hydrocarbon Vision 2030 for Northeast. The objectives of the plan are to leverage the region's hydrocarbon potential, enhance clean access to clean fuels, improve availability of petroleum products, and facilitate economic development which will link the common people to the economic activities in this sector. The states covered under this uh, include Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, 
Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim and Tripura. The vision aims at doubling oil and gas production by 2030, making clean fuels accessible, fast-tracking projects, generating employment opportunities and promoting cooperation with neighboring countries and targets of rupees 1.3 lakh crore till 2030 in Northeast India. The vision statement also lays out a detailed roadmap for the entire hydrocarbons value chain covering upstream, midstream and downstream segments. Other than production, the focus areas in the Hydrocarbon Vision 2030 for Northeast also includes exploring hydrocarbon linkages and trade opportunities with Bangladesh, Myanmar, Nepal and Bhutan, implementation of Make in India in the region, development of health and medical facilities, industrial policy and infrastructure related action points. The last policy year, National Data uh, Repository the National Data Repository has been set up to populate all the geoscientific data available in the country. NDR has also been formulated to provide data to various industry ENP operators through launching of OALP and HELP program. The interested exploration and production companies would be able to view geoscientific data from anywhere in the world and firm up an opinion regarding prospectively of the blocks prior to bidding for the block. I would now request Mr. Manik Naran to please continue with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Urvisha, uh, for the insights. Uh, and uh, good evening, everyone. I will take the presentation forward, uh, starting with the point price movements of key benchmark groups. Uh, the Brent Oil, West Texas Intermediate, and the way crude are the main crude benchmarks which serve as a reference price for buyers and sellers. Brent crude oil is a sweet light crude oil, but it isn't as sweet as the WTI crude oil. Brent serves as the leading global price and is used to price two thirds of the world's internationally traded crude oil supplies. Brent is a combination of crude oil from 15 different oil fields in the Brent and North Sea areas. India uses the Indian basket of crude as a benchmark crude. It is used as an indicator of the price of crude imports in India and government of India watches the index when examining domestic price issues. The composition of Indian basket of crude represents average of Oman and Dubai for SAR grades and Brent for sweet grade in the ratio of crude process during previous financial year. Due to its huge stature in the crude oil market, Brent crude oil prices are influenced by a number of factors. Prices of crude oil are highly positively correlated with other benchmark crude oil. Price of oil is determined by a number of factors. Oil prices are a function of global supply and demand. Prices of oil are also influenced by political and economic conditions prevailing in the oil producing and refining countries as well. Potential World crisis in oil producing countries dramatically increase oil prices. Environmental hazards too have an effect on oil prices as it has the potential to stall oil production. When it comes to the macroeconomic policies and its influence on oil prices, it is expected that a strong economy is likely to increase the demand for crude oil. And on the other hand, an economic crisis would lead to a decline in oil prices since the start of this financial year particularly from june 2017 onwards prices of brent have been on the rise reason being drop in the u.s crude inventories a stronger expected growth in the demand this year geopolitical tension between opec countries and due to the disruption in production caused by the cyclic by the cyclonic activity in the u.s since mid-July, Saudi Arabia pledged to a lower crude oil exports. In October, prices of global crude oil started to increase sharply as a reflection of export cuts undertaken by Saudi Arabia and production cuts undertaken by OPEC and non-OPEC countries to rebalance the global supply glut. Oil prices were also impacted by the rising tension between the Iraqi and Kurdish forces as the Kurdistan region of Iraq pressed to hold a referendum on independence. Post November 30th, 2017, 
meeting of the OPEC and non-OPEC countries, it was concluded to cut production by 1.8 million barrels per day till the end of 2018. In December, the North Sea's Fortis pipeline system, one of the world's most important crude oil con conduits, was shut due to the discovery of hairline crack. About 4,50,000 barrels of oil a day flow through the pipeline when it is operating normally. The shutdown of the pipeline and the decision of supply cuts put an upward pressure on the prices of crude oil. Now I will take you forward with the benchmark natural gas. Prices of natural gas are directly related with market demand and supply. Factors which affect crude oil affect natural gas as well as the prices of natural gas are highly correlated to the prices of crude oil. In 2014, the prices of crude oil fell sharply as OPEC was not cutting down on the supply of oil, which led to an oversupply of crude oil. And at the same time, shale revolution was at the peak in the US. This also led to the fall in the natural gas pr prices worldwide. Natural gas prices saw a sharp increase in prices through 2016 across regions. US Henry hub price registered a 57% increase from $2.28 per MMBTU in January 2016 to $3.59 per MMBTU in December 2016. This increase was accounted for rise in domestic consumption. The domestic natural gas price is determined by the formula which has been decided according to the new domestic gas price formula, which considers the price of natural gas in US Henry Hub, UK New Balancing Point, Alberta Gas of Canada and Russian natural gas. The volume of total consumption of natural gas in the North American region, that is US, Canada and Mexico and European Union, former Soviet Union and Russia is also considered while deciding the price of domestic natural gas, which prevails for a six month period. Prices are that is that means that prices are revised on a bi yearly basis. So by considering also, the consumption of natural gas of the region with the prices, there is an avoidance of inflating the price for the following period. Ever since the prices of natural gas were to be determined according to the new domestic gas policy, the prices have been fixed. The prices have been fixed, have also been falling as the global benchmark prices of the natural gas have been dipping. Until recently, when there has been a rise of natural gas prices, as there has been a rise of global crude oil prices. With a 16.5% jump in the domestic natural gas prices in the last October price revision, the end users of natural gas like fertilizer companies, power companies, CGD companies will feel a rise in their input costs. So now I take you uh, uh, forward towards the rating aspect with the heading of ratings uh, dispersions and the transition. So as uh, the uh, we all know that ENP is a highly capital intensive business. So private sector investments have not been uh, has been very limited as comparison to the public sector, though there was huge investment by the Reliance Industries, but then uh, natural gas uh, didn't uh, the production didn't uh, meet its expected production. So in India, like uh, Urvisha also touched base, like ONGC and Oil India, they are the two which contribute towards the 71% of the total crude oil production. So in terms of the rating, both are AAA rated in the long term and with the outlook of stable and short term rating of care A1 plus. So the rating primarily derives the comfort from the majority ownership by the government and the experienced and professional management along with the long track record operation in the exploration and production industry and dominant position in the domestic industry. So the government has been uh, pushing a lot of new policies to uh, encourage the private sector participation, but it yet to be seen that how uh, those policies are taken by the private sector. In terms of the ratings transition, uh, we see that uh, from 2013 to 2018, the ONGC being the you know PSU promoted by the central government uh, has been at AAA consistently likewise the oil india from 2016 to 2018 it has been at triple a so these are the two uh, major psus uh, into the enp segment in india 
so i'll take you forward now to the uh, next uh, topic which is investments attracted by exploration and production so till date as per the data released by the department of industrial policy and promotion that is dipp the petroleum and natural gas sector has attracted fdi is worth us dollar 6.86 billion between april 2000 and september 2017 that is a period of almost seven and a half to eight years and the state oil companies have planned a capital spending of rupees 89,000 crore or dollar 14 billion in 2018-19 half of which will go into the exploration and production the ongc board had approved projects worth over rupees 78,000 crore in the last three years these projects are likely to lead to additional oil and gas output of over 180 million tons oil equivalent Adding to, the, to that, ONGC has also come up with a new blueprint to increase the crude oil production by 4 million tons, that is 29, 29 million barrels by 2020. The company will raise its crude oil production from 22.6 million tons, that is 166 million barrels in 2017-2018 to 26.42 million tons, that is 194 million barrels by 2021-22. So this was ONGC then Vedanta, the private sector giant Vedanta Kane, India has announced investment of over USD $1 billion to monetize 200 billion barrel of its crude oil reserves. And the government also through the DGH, that is Directorate General of Hydrocarbons, has drafted a policy to promote enhanced recovery methods and offer fiscal incentives to companies in order to enhance output from old and aging fields as recovery from domestic fields has been below average and most of producing fields are aging. As Urvisha also pointed out in one of the regulatory regimes, the government of India recently offered 55 blocks under the open acreage licensing policy where six firms have shown expression of interest for exploration of hydrocarbon blocks. This is the largest offering the government has announced in the past eight years. Upstream players can carve out of their own areas of exploration and place bids. Under the Discover Small Fields policy, 67 fields in the 46 contract fields were offered by the government to tap over 625 million barrels of oil and oil equivalent gas. The, the conglomerate Alliance Industries Limited, along with its partner British Petroleum BPPLC, has are also going to invest US dollar six billion for the development of new gas fields in the KGD6 block. And again, the ONGC plans to invest US dollar 11 billion in exploration and development of blocks in KG Basin, which is expected to increase gas production by around 30% over the next three to four years. And ONGC has signed an agreement with the government of Andhra Pradesh to invest around rupees 78,000 crore in the KG Basin for producing hydrocarbons by financial year 21-22. This was about investment towards the ENP. So, we see that a lot of investments are coming into into this sector and the focus of the government is to reduce the imports in a big way and now we come to the care ratings views and opinion on the on the sector so one of the key factors in order to increase the domestic production will be focus on increasing domestic production and attract more investments in the ENP sector we believe that given the current circumstances India is likely to reduce crude oil import dependence. Domestic crude oil production is expected to increase and become more stable by the end of financial year 2018-19 with the introduction of hydrocarbon exploration and licensing policy where the companies get to carve out their areas of interest to explore through the open acreage licensing coupled with the rise of the crude oil prices globally domestic production likely to rise steadily at a stable growth rate. The inclusion of US as a source of crude oil imports is a great move for India. In terms of the cost, it will, it will be beneficial as the US crude oil is dollar two per barrel cheaper than the imported Dubai crude, which will help in reducing the import bill and will also help as a, will also help act as a soothing balm in reducing the current account deficit. It is expected to go a long way in avoiding the price hikes arising out of geopolitical disruptions 
which is likely to help usher practice stability and energy security. The sourcing of crude oil from the U.S. is a step towards strengthening India-U.S. ties in the hydrocarbon sphere. Having U.S. in the picture helps India maintain diversify in the supply base, diversity in the supply phase. So, with respect to this, you know, supplier concentration risk. This is one of the steps to de-risk on uh, the front of procuring the oil and gas from Middle East. As per the, our forecast, the consumption of crude oil by refineries are expected to grow at a rate of 4.5% CAGR and reach the level of 2,145.3 million barrels during financial year Um, good afternoon. Apologies on the little uh, technical glitch we are facing, but I think I'll just carry forward with the presentation for now. As Mr. Manik was saying that we were talking about the consumption of crude oil. So as per our forecasts, the consumption of crude oil by refineries is to grow at a rate of 4.5 CAGR and reach a level of 2,145.3 million barrels during 21-22. There lies a flip side for crude oil consumption on account of increasing use of natural gas as India is on the move towards a gas-based economy, natural gas being a cleaner and greener fuel alternative. Rat rapid adoption of electric vehicles by 2030 could also cause oil demand to plateau. Now, on account of crude oil prices, what we have forecasted is that the price of Brent will not break the resistance of dollar 70 per barrel but it will not be it will be above the support levels of 65 barrels on a monthly basis the rise in crude oil prices leads to an increase in the inflation levels of the country which in turn worsens the current account deficit and fiscal deficit WPI inflation gets directly impacted as the pass through of prices increases is automatic for most products the WPI could increase by 0.5-0.7% on an account of 10% increase in the crude oil prices. CPI impact would be less pronounced given the lower rate of oil related products and could be in the region of 0.3-0.35. As India is the world's third largest consumer of crude oil, India imports around 4.2 million barrels per day at a macro level with imports of 1568 million barrels of crude oil on an annualized basis a dollar increase in prices on a permanent basis could increase the bill by roughly 10000 crore on an annual basis assuming no change in the exchange rate 
the import bill could increase by approximately dollars 1.5 billion for every dollar increase in crude oil prices lastly with our opinions and views towards natural gas segment of enp now natural gas is emerging to be the gas of the future due to its clean burning properties and because its impact on the environment is not harmful india plans to increase its gas usage in the energy mix by 15% from the current 6.5% the world average of gas use in the total energy consumption is approximately 24% now domestic natural gas still financial year 1617 as i had highlighted earlier was on a decline due to less than expected output from the kg basin and due to aging wells but in the current financial year the output till the april january period has been higher than 4% as expected than the previous financial year at care ratings we are estimating the production of domestic natural gas to rise in the coming few years and maybe by financial year 2022 we expect the level to be 39.6 bcm the government is working towards india becoming a natural based economy and to elevate that we do need domestic production of the natural gas to be increased the rise in production would be supported with the amount of investments the ex and the exploration and production segment has captured as highlighted by mr manik in the previous slides the imports of lng we do expect will grow but will be growing at a very steady rate so to the extent of just plugging in the structural gap between uh, gas demand and domestic production so our conclusion would be that we do expect reduction sizable reduction in the level of imports as a greater impetus has been given to enhance domestic production and as when it comes to curtailing of consumption there has been a lot of policies which have been undertaken like introduction of electric vehicles or biofuels which will at least bring down a consumption levels to a certain extent we are hoping the consumption levels are brought down to an extent of 10% will be successful when it's coming down to the part of natural gas imports when it comes to oil and uh, when it comes to crude oil imports we expect that it will be sub sub substantial it will be stable for a while and maybe a little bit a few years later we expect imports to be reducing by to extent of 10% one more very important development which india is upon is the setting up of a natural gas trading platform which is going to lead to a market determined pricing of gas this will be much similar to the global hubs such as henry hub of the us and new balancing point of the uk both lng and domestically produced natural gas will be traded at this hub this will enable market determination of indian price of natural gas all new production will have marketing freedom this move is to encourage more investments towards the exploration of natural gas pricing freedom is one of the biggest triggers for investment interest which could probe foreign countries to partner with technology companies within india and outside to bring the expertise in this sector i would now like to hand this over to mridul sir thank you risha uh, with this we come to the end of the presentation session uh, now participants will be taking a break of 2 minutes before we come back to take your queries uh, you are requested to start uh, keying in the questions in the slot provided i repeat we'll be taking a break of 2 minutes before we come back uh, to take our q and a session you are requested to please start keying in your questions thank you
Hi friends, now we'll begin the Q&A session. Uh, Odisha will take off from here. Okay, so the first question I have is why is the existing, why is the government not taking up measures? Up till now, why has the government not been taking up measures to increase oil and gas supply from mature and existing fields? Okay, so up till now, the government has not been taking up measures is as since 2014, there has been a considerate decline in the oil and gas prices. And because of that, investments in the ENP sector became very unviable as the cost was not getting recovered. By investing a lot of money in extraction of the oil and gas, we were not getting the break even point was not happening. Hence, there was a degrowth in the um, in the production processes. Also, what happens is that usually to, in, to get outputs from these old and aging fields, you have to go through enhanced recovery process, which involves the injection of fluids in oil and gas fields to boost yield. But these are expensive and it's very complicated and technologically advanced and it's a very time taking process. So you do need a lot of investments for that. And for investments to come, you need the oil prices to be at a more stable and uh, viable level. So now we have been seeing there has been an increase in an oil prices, which is encouraging more investments towards the sector as well. Also, a, a good thing, a good uh, plus point is that LN ONGC is set to hire any of these three international uh, conglomerates to help uh, increase the oil output from its uh, fields. So with that coming into place, we do expect a little bit of more recovery towards the segment. Okay, so the next question I have here is, can you elaborate a bit more on the production enhancement policy? So the uh, production enhancement policy is to enhance the output from the aging oil fields. The incentives which are given in the Directorate General of the Hydrocarbons draft policy is that operators are to get weighted deductions of up to 150%. And they are to receive 50% cess waiver on crude oil output for 10 years. Whereas when it comes to gas producers, uh, SOPs equal to 10% of wellhead price on the output. And on the offshore fields, there will be a waiver of applicable royalty. When it comes to the onshore fields, discount in share of profit or revenue will be also applicable. So these are the kind of... Uh, incentives they're looking at while giving upon the uh, production enhancement policy.
the next question I have here is in recent times it is heard that methanol will be used as a petrol blend is this move on the card and how will it impact on our import bill so there is talks going about of inc of including alternative sources on in the uh, energy mix as this does bring down the production the government is very adamant on the set on achieving the targets of the 10% re reduction of import of, of imports of oil and natural gas so when it comes to oil imports crude oil is used by the refine crude oil is used by refinery refineries for processing for refinery products now if you are if you are using methanol methanol is the byproduct of these wool pulp manufacturers which is do constituting towards the alternative fuel source with that on the move they will definitely if it's if it's a channelized properly maybe within not uh, not uh, in the near future but at least in the coming uh, coming years by 2030 we could have a more uh, impact on it so it will definitely bring the import bill down because that's that we are importing much less in comparison so yes it will at least bring down the bill by a good uh, five percent from the current levels Okay, so the last question of the day is that uh, why are we giving what why are we giving the outlook for uh, crude oil to be bit ranging between sixty five dollars and uh, seventy dollars? Okay, so the outlook we have given across for crude oil prices to range between sixty five dollars and seventy dollars is that we expect crude oil to be range bound for a uh, for a, for at least for a time being, at least till the end of uh, two thousand and eighteen. This being said is because there's been a constant tug of war war which is happening between o the OPEC and Russian OPEC and Russia and with USA with OPEC and uh, Russia being very determined to clear the supply glut they have stopped their production and all the OPEC countries have abided by their production cuts and that has to an extent helped in clearing out the glut as well but at the same time USA has been adding more and more oil rigs in their uh, exploration and production uh, plants and it has been bringing up the production quite high in fact uh, in november 2017 after a good amount after 1970 or usa also crossed the 10 million barrels per day output so that to an extent is also bringing down the uh, prices of oil so oil prices is going to remain range bound because there is a supply glut which has been happening and the production cut has been been taken very seriously and at the same time usa also is increasing its production so that is definitely going to keep it uh, range bound at least on a monthly basis between 65 to 70 when it comes to the indian basket of crude we assume that the ba indian basket of crude will be two two dollars less than what the brent prices will be as we have always observed that the indian basket of crude on a monthly basis is two dollars less than the brent uh, thank you all. Thank you, Rusha. Uh, I think uh, by this we'll, uh, we have come to the end of the webinar. Uh, thank you again for uh, taking your time out and being a part of this Care Ratings webinar. Uh, we hope the discussion was insightful and we look forward to your participation in the future also. We also look forward to your feedback suggestions, um, uh, which will be coming via email in your suggestion box. Uh, goodbye for now. Thank you.